What do you see when I show you this image? How about this one? You're probably thinking pixel art, and you'd be right. Kind of. Let me explain. If you've been keeping up with indie games over the past decade, you might have noticed a trend. Pretty much every game coming out has been using pixel art. And that begs the question, why? Well, I did some research on this topic, and let me tell you, the results I found were insane. Not only did I find the methods they used to get this amazing art style, but how we can replicate it and make our own pixel art in seconds. Peanut butter jelly the long, the long way. way. When we're talking about pixel art, specifically in games, there are two methods of creating the assets. And the problem a lot of people face is that pixel art is hard. You have to create each character pixel by pixel, understand color theory, limited palettes, and on top of all that, you need to create sprite sheets. Do you see the problem yet? This workflow is insane. You're having to create tens, sometimes even hundreds of individual sprites just for character animation alone. This isn't including things like weapons or environments. Oh, and not to mention design changes. If you want to make a fresh new weapon or change the design of an existing one, you have to do the whole process again from the start. This can cripple the progress of a game's development, and for some, it definitely did. But I want to hone in on one game in particular, and it's this game alone that popularized the new age pixel art workflow, which is method number two. Wow. <laughs> Frank, what are you doing? Motion Twin is a game studio based in France, and they actually made a slew of games before reaching their breakout success. I'm talking, of course, about Dead Cells. This game was monumental in the creation of pixel art, not because of the style, but because of how they made their sprite sheets. Instead of going pixel by pixel and manually drawing each character's multiple animations, they developed a way to automate the process, and it's why they were able to push out a crazy amount of updates to the game during its early access run on Steam. This included things like new weapons, characters, even full-blown environments. All of these were able to be created and implemented into the game almost on a monthly basis. The methods they use to achieve this workflow are actually super simple, but not as simple as learning a new skill with the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning platform curated to show the best of the best creators. You can learn everything from 3D all the way to pixel art with literally hundreds of career focused classes to start the new year the right way. Plus, it's entirely ad-free. If you're like me, I love learning new skills. And with the theme of this video, I've been watching Introduction to Pixel Art by Simon Sanchez. This class gets you super comfortable with pixel art basics and how to create gorgeous designs the traditional way. With Skillshare, no goal is too small. Whether you want to explore 3D or pixel art, Skillshare teachers take you step by step through the process. If you're still watching this and aren't convinced, well, Skillshare has hooked me up with an amazing offer for you. The first 1,000 people to use the link below will get a full one month free trial of Skillshare. That's more than enough time to binge watch a certain someone's classes. Grab your free month below and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So in order to automate the process of pixel art, Dead Cells needed to find a way to generate pixels instead of drawing them manually. And luckily enough, this was actually done years ago by a little company you may know called Rare. That's right, Donkey Kong Country. The sprites in this game were actually made by modeling Donkey Kong in 3D and rendering them out into sprite sheets. This was some of the first instances of pre-rendered sprites being used in video games. Now, back then with their primitive technology, the render was pretty much already a sprite and they were going for a more 3D style anyway. But for Dead Cells, they wanted pixel art, not just a flat 3D render. And this is where the next step of the process comes into play. Pixel art is one of the few art styles born out of limitations. Limiting the palette of color you can use and the amount of pixels forces you to think outside the box. However, with Dead Cells, they quickly learned that they could create essentially anything in 3D space 
and convert it from a high quality render to a low resolution pixel art with some simple post-processing. This is why they could create tons of new assets for the game in sometimes just weeks. So how did they do it? Well, it's through a process called quantization. In layman's terms, they create a model in 3D, render the image, scale it down to pixelate the image, then scale it back up. It essentially limits the amount of pixels available to work with and creates that crisp pixel art style with way less effort. But it doesn't stop there. You can see here with Smeef, the color palette isn't huge, but it still doesn't feel quite like pixel art. That's because we need to convert and limit the color palette. To do this, it's the same process, but with the HSV values instead. Essentially, you separate each value, add some math in between, choose the number of colors that you want your image to be limited to, and combine the HSV values again. Now you can see the massive difference this makes and especially when using a smaller color palette of two to four colors. This process rapidly speeds up the workflow to creating pixel art, but there's still one more way that Dead Cells was able to push this effect even further. With game engines, oftentimes there'll be emissive materials or objects that directly interact with lighting. If you're pre-rendering a sprite put into your game, there's almost always gonna be problems with how lights interact with it because it's essentially a flat plane. There's no information on the sprite to tell the game engine how a light will interact with it. So it'll just end up looking like trash. And this is where the concept of imposters come in. This is a term commonly used for optimizing a game engine, and it's actually heavily used in Breath of the Wild. If you have a dense model like a tree, for example, but it's super far away from the camera, you don't need to render all that geometry. Instead, you could just render a flat plane image of the tree, have it always facing the camera, and bake the normal map data into it. This means that the lights will still interact with the sprite, and your game isn't going to explode from the insane amount of triangles it's trying to render. Now for Dead Cells, they're not trying to render 3D objects and triangles, but this workflow is still relevant to them as you can see the lights in the game interact beautifully with its characters and environments. So now you know the process of pixel art creation. It's actually fairly simple, but if you don't know how to use Blender or other 3D software, you kind of have a bad time. And if you'd like to fix that, you'll want to watch this video right here.